I have another budget flashlight I would like to share with you today. This time it is the Trustfire MC5. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this light, keep watching. Quickly, I'd like to thank Trustfire for sending me the MC5 so that I could share it with you. So as always, we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll go over its key features, its physical and performance specifications, as well as its modes of operation. And then we'll get outside and do some testing. All right, just before we get started, we'll take a look at what came with the light. So let me bring the box in. So this is the box that the light arrived in. Inside of the box, a few things, obviously the manual and warranty information. A magnetic charging cable, we'll talk about that a little bit in a minute. A lanyard, a single spare O-ring, and a nice little velour case, so you don't often see that with flashlights. All right, let's pick those out of the way. A couple more things is, one is the 20, 5,000 milliamp 21700 lithium ion battery installed in the light, and yes, it is accessible. And the pocket clip, those also came with this. All right, so key features. Um, since this is a budget light, there's not a lot to say about it, but there are two things that do stand out. One, of course, as I mentioned, is the magnetic charger that just just grabs onto the port like that and the fact that it has a magnetic base so it does add some versatility to it as well so let's get into the physical specifications and of course this information will be in the video description underneath as well overall length 4.5 inches or 115 millimeters diameter at its widest is one inch even or 25 millimeters weight with the battery is five ounces even or 143 grams its waterproof rating is, well, it's listed twice in the manual itself. One place it says IP68, and in another spot it says IPX8. Now, the only difference there is the 6 would represent the dust intrusion, and uh, the X is where it isn't tested for that. I tend to think, just based on the design, that it probably is IP68, because I can't see where any dust would get into this. And it does have a 1 meter impact resistance. All right, just before I provide the performance specifications, I thought I'd give you a few close-ups of the light. So one of the things I like about this is the color itself. So it does come in two color variations, this brown and of course a black. They did send me the brown. It's nice. It's just, you know, it's nice to have a light of a nice looking color once in a while. All right, just going over it, as you can see, it has a fairly deep reflector. It is the orange peel style and that does provide a fairly good cast, but you can see it's not very wide, so it's not what you would call a searchlight. This is definitely an EDC style light. It does have some minor crenellations. They're not very tall on the top. They're there. They're okay. That's nice to have. Uh, heat dissipation rings, again, pretty much minor, but they are there. Now there is the on off button. Now, as far as aesthetics go, the fact that it's anodized blue is nice to see visually. Yeah. And it does have a little LED in the center. Now, as far as feel, it is smooth. There's no rubber tactile feel to it. Not necessary, but it is nice to have that at times. Uh, here's the only thing that I'll mention about the on off switch. It's not very prominent. So it is going to be one of those ones where you tend to rotate it in your hand until you find it. If you're not looking or it's dark, uh, here's the thing. It's going to be identical in feel to the battery charging port. So yeah, points off, I guess we'll say for not having the best on off switch in terms of tactile feel. I'm also going to show, well, let's start with the other end first. So this is a magnetic charging base. As you can see, there are a couple spots the lanyard could be fed through on either side if you want to carry that. Uh, here's my, this is going to be a con right off of the top for me. Although it does look nice, I don't think the pocket clip is very functional, at least not where it is in this location. It's right in the middle of the light. So if I were to insert that into my pocket, it, the top half would be sticking up above my pocket. Now, maybe that's not a bad for you, but I just find that's a little bit too much sticking out of my pocket to catch on things and or possibly damage it. If I were to flip the light around in its exact position, so it was down, then I'd have too much of the body sticking up, even more a little bit. So what am I saying? I'm saying that I would have preferred to have seen the pocket clip, the ring that where it would uh, lodge in 
is down at the base, so I can reverse the clip. I don't think there's any way you could do it up higher in the light, but yeah, down near the base of the light so that it would just sit a little deeper in your pocket and be less exposed. By the way, just to show you the battery while we're doing this, comes apart at the top, not at the bottom, like a lot of lights do. It has uh, its own Trustfire branded uh, battery, the 21700, 5000 milliamp. Not sure who made, makes this battery for them, but uh, yeah, it's okay. Now, just put this together. By the way, this is an anniversary. Of, I guess it's a, where does it say right there? 14 year anniversary model. That's why the color on this one. Okay, let's move on to the performance specifications. So a little different from a lot of brands is how they refer to the different lumen settings. We're used to hearing turbo and moonlight and low, medium, high, of course. What they do with this light is they call what we would normally call, most people would normally call turbo, they just call it extreme bright. Okay, extreme brights, that just gives you the indication it's the highest lumen setting. And it is 3,300 lumens and will last for 215 minutes. No, no mention of step down. And I did let it run for, I don't know, five minutes or so to see if I could get it to step down. And I didn't. So I have to assume that it will run 215 minutes at 3,300 lumens. I will say it got fairly warm. Not so warm you couldn't touch it, but a little bit warm. At high, it has 550 lumens, which will run for 5.2 hours. At middle, instead of medium, middle, 160 lumens, which will run for 19 hours. And they do call the lowest setting moonlight, but it's seven lumens, and that runs for 215 hours. A little brighter than most moonlight uh, settings are. Still not too bad, so it's not so bright that it's going to blind you in the dark and lose your night vision, but it's uh, just a little brighter than the others. I, I don't mind it at all. It does have a strobe as well at 3,300 lumens. All right, as far as the operation of the light, it is, it's actually quite simple. It's just a little bit different than a lot of other lights. So if you carry some of the other brand name lights and you're used to their operating system, there's going to be just a small retraining of your memory and your muscle memory for operating this light. However, if this is your only light, uh, you know, you're going to adapt to it very, very quickly. And what, what am I talking about? Well, it's the on off itself. So you actually have to press and hold the button for one half second. It's not just a simple click, but you have to press and hold for one half second. Once it's on, however, it's just a quick tap and you will cycle through. So that was extreme bright, by the way. You'll cycle through the different lumen settings. Now I'm at moonlight. Let it be middle, high, and then back to the extreme bright. And it's a long press of a half second to turn the light off. Now, if I want to use turbo, or not turbo, sorry, uh, strobe, uh, it's a long press of the button again. But this time it is for a full two seconds. So let me do that. And you can see then it goes over to strobe and a long press to turn it off. So just a little different. If you want to do strobe, just keep the button, press the button and keep holding onto it until the strobe goes on. Now you can do a battery status test with this. I found this a bit hit or miss. Let's see if I can do it. It's like a really short tap of the battery and you should see a light sign up in the middle of the on off. So there's a little LED there and it should be Yep, green. It's showing green to show me that the battery is still good. And if had it shown red, then of course I'd be looking to recharge the battery. And the last thing I can say about the operation is it does have an electric lockout, which is just a double tap. Either way, it'll, it will lock it out or unlock it. Having gone over the key features as well as the physical and performance specifications and modes of operations for the Trustfire MC5, Let's get outside and do some testing with it. Doing some nighttime testing of the Trustfire MC5. And I've got it on low now. Not a lot to see. You can see the side of my house, but you can't see too far. I, can't, I can only see what's around my feet. Take it up to middle. No, but that is starting to add some light to the scene. Pretty much all flood. Very, very slight central hotspot, but you really can't even tell the transition between the hotspot and flood, take it up to high. That's pretty bright. And look at that, look at that. Look at all that light on extreme bright. Lights up the whole yard, all flood, extremely bright.
All right, let's wrap this video up with a few closing comments for the Trustfire MC5 rechargeable flashlight. So what do I really like about it? Um, I'd like to say it's the price, but I'm not sure because when I went to the website, it was price listed at $139. That would be a bit too much for this light in my mind. However, at the same time, it is on sale, at least right now, for $69. That is a good price. That would be a reasonable price for this light. Just be cautious if you're interested in purchasing this light that you make sure that it is on sale when you go to the website. I do like the color of the light. I know that sounds kind of trivial, but with all the black flashlights that I've been trying out, it's nice to have something just a little different to look at. I do like the light pattern. Now, it is a central hot spot with uh, a well-defined hot spot and then spill or flood on the outside. Some people don't like it. Some people really like it. I can take it either way. It just seemed to work fairly well for me, at least in testing. Um, those are the things I think I like most about it. Maybe one more thing, and that would be the magnetic base. It is nice to be able to mount it to something so you're hands-free if you're doing some work with the light. I have found that come in handy with lights like this one. Okay, so what do I not like so much? Probably right off at of the top, the thing that bothers me most is this pocket clip. I'm probably just going to take it off and just put it in with the, the box with the other items because I don't think it's very much, very effective. I suppose if I was putting it on webbing, it wouldn't be so bad, but for carrying it in my pocket, I would much prefer the clip, uh, the ring where, where it attaches, be at this end so I can reverse it, then carry it to, uh, light down or lens down and deep in my pocket. Yeah, the pocket clip is just, I don't see it as being very functional. Another thing I'm not a fan of is this type of on off switch. I would prefer to see something that I can find in the dark or without looking with my thumb and this is not it. That doesn't have a very good tactile feel. It's easier. It's easy to confuse with the magnetic charging port. That would be the next thing on my list of cons or at least relative cons. Magnetic charging ports. I'm not a fan because of course what happens when you lose your charging cord? Yes, you can still charge the light. You just have to take the battery out and have a battery charger so you can charge it separately. But, you know, I don't know. I, I prefer to see the USB Type-C. Some people like that. They think it's, it's, a, it's a great feature. Me, not so much. Not a deal breaker, just something to consider. Now, what about the operating system? does take a little getting used to having to hold the button down a full half second before the light comes on and then tap it to run it through its lumen settings. That's not the end of the world. Um, I guess the thing I don't like about the operating system is that there is no direct access to moonlight. And if I'm camping and I don't want to blind myself and then ruin my night vision, I like to be able to go right to moonlight without having to run it through the lumen settings. And I guess the same thing can be said about Extreme Bright, their version of Turbo. If I really want that brightness right now, I don't want to have to run it up through the settings. I know that sounds uh, kind of petty, uh, the moonlight, maybe not so much. That actually can be can, kind of important. So I, I, I do would prefer to see direct access to moonlight. Okay, those are all the things I like and would like to see improved about this light. I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts on it. What do you think about this light? What are your thoughts on the operating system and all the other features that I mentioned? Please put those in the comments section below. And if you have any questions, put those in the comments section below. And as mentioned, I'll put all the specifications in the video description as well as links to where you can take a look at this light and see if it's the right one for you. All right, get out and explore. Take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.